one last night. Imagine what must have been going through our Lord's mind. One last meal with his chosen disciples. One last chance to say whatever he wanted to say to them. One last opportunity to communicate with his chosen apostles some final teaching. Imagine how important every syllable must have felt to Jesus. Every movement of his body must have been something he kind of was anxious to make sure he said just the right thing or did just the right thing. And of course, you could say, well, he was Jesus, so it was always the right thing. But just suppose for a minute that you were like him. I mean, if you had one last chance to speak to your beloved friends, one last sentence, one last night, one last meal to share with them, what would you want to say? What more could our Lord Jesus have said to his chosen apostles than what he had already been telling them. But here was his last chance, and that night, that last meal that he had with the twelve must have been a night where they hung on every last word of Jesus. Every breath that he took, they must have noted it carefully, and after he died and rose again, you can imagine how they spoke. Remember, remember in the upper room the things he said, the things he did. It's True, of course, that everything Jesus said and did is worth remembering, but you know how it goes. There are certain events in your life that stand out, that are remembered more than others, and certainly this last night, this last Thursday evening meal that Jesus had with his disciples was one of those kind of things. And so what did he communicate to them on that last night? St. John tells us what was on Jesus' mind. Having loved those who were his own, he loved them to the end. That Thursday night was all about love, which I almost hesitate to say because that word seems so trite, doesn't it? That word is used so often that it's kind of lost its value. It is so common that it seems to be, oh, a sermon about love, love, love. Everybody talks about love, right? But that is what Jesus spoke with his disciples about. That was what was in his mind, and I don't think it's trite at all to say that if you sum up the life of Jesus in one word, it would be this, love, love. Having loved those who were his own, he loved them completely, all the way, He loved them to the end, it says. But see, here's the problem with love. Trying to communicate to someone love is a difficult thing because words, it's it's not that there's a problem with words, but words often don't quite convey everything you want them to convey, do they? So parents kind of stumble over how to communicate their love to their children. And husbands all have this problem. They love their wives, but they may not be so good with words, and so they can't quite put it into words. There are times when words fail. And I think the deeper the love that we share, whether it's for your children, for your spouse, or for your friends, the deeper the love, the harder it is to actually express it, isn't it? The more you want to express it and the harder it is to express. It's kind of this elusive thing. I want to tell my wife how much I love her, but whenever I start to do it, the words just get jumbled up and it doesn't work out. The ministry of Jesus can be summed up in this one word, Love. And Jesus certainly knew how to talk about love, but he also knew, he also knew, didn't he, how to express that love, how to show his love. And throughout his ministry, in all of his miracles, he was showing the love of God to a fallen world. So he reaches out and touches a leper. So he takes a blind man and gives him his sight. So he raises the dead. And in all of those things, he is showing. He is showing what his message always was, that God loves his world. Words often fall short when it comes to love, and actions by themselves are prone to misunderstanding, aren't they? So it's not that we need either words or actions to show love, but we need both. And on this last night, Jesus puts both of them together so perfectly, doesn't he? 
All that Jesus did in his ministry was colored by his love. It was all motivated by his love. And that kind of brings something out that I think often we don't think about. So let me just make this point to you real quick tonight. Think about how you look forward to loving your friends. Right? If you have some great plan cooked up, some concoction of love that you're going to kind of share with your friends, when you actually get to the point of carrying out the plan, it's not a chore, is it? It's not a burden to love your friends. It's not a chore. It's not a burden for parents to love their children. Oh, sometimes the tasks are not the most enjoyable. It's not a burden. It's not a chore for husbands and wives to love one another, although sometimes, of course, sin gets in the way. It's actually enjoyable to love one another. And think of it this way. It was actually enjoyable for Jesus to be with his disciples, It was actually enjoyable for Jesus to come into this world. He liked doing it. He liked being with his disciples. He liked eating with them. He liked performing those miracles because he loved them. And he loves you. For everything that could be said about that night long ago should also still be said about this night. The things Jesus said and did did not somehow get stuck in the past. But when he rose from the dead, everything that he said and did became true for all times and for each and every one of you. So Jesus' message to you tonight, my message to you tonight is this. Quite simply, if I could sum it up in one word, it is this, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus loves you. And to show that love, look what he did for his disciples. The foot washing is the paradigm. Jesus says, here is the example, the example for understanding not just this one night as if Jesus was like, well, I got to do something for these guys. Uh, uh, There's a bowl of water and I guess they've got some dirty feet. I guess I'll just do that. But that action That action is a great symbolic act of what his whole ministry, his whole life was all about. Just notice the details of what Jesus did. He stood up from the meal and he took off his outer garments. He took off those garments and he put on, in place of his robes, he put on the form of a servant. He tied a towel around his waist. Isn't that exactly what he did when the Son of God laid aside the glory of heaven? When he came into this world and took our flesh upon himself, he came and was born just like one of us. He came into the world not as a great king with great power and great majesty, but he took the form of a servant. Why? Because he loves you. And taking that form of a servant in that upper room, Jesus stooped down. He took the bowl in his hands and he stooped down. And don't you see in that a great picture of his whole ministry, the stooping down of God, how he condescends like a great father to his children, how he comes down to our level and he says, let me lift you up, son. Let me lift up those who are fallen. Let me lift up those who are weak. Oh, see in this foot washing of Jesus, not just one random thing that he did, but a great picture the paradigm for all of his ministry, his ministry of love. And he washes them, making them clean. Now, I could say a lot tonight about being clean, but just let the simplicity of that statement resound in your hearts tonight. Jesus makes you clean. You know how bad it is to be dirty, right? You know how bad it is when you look at your hands and you just see all the dirt, all the grime underneath your fingernails and you wash your hands, but you know I can't really get it all out. That's what sin does to us. Sin makes you dirty. It dirties up the soul. It dirties up the heart. It dirties up the mind. It dirties up the conscience. And Jesus comes to make you clean so that you can stand before God the Father and you can show him your hands and you can show him yourself and you don't have to hide from him. You don't have to hide and say, well, I couldn't make myself clean. You don't have to because Jesus loves you and he comes to make you clean. Yes, in all of those details of that night, Jesus was showing his disciples this one last way to show them, without having to tell them, to show them by his actions what he was all about. And what he was all about is love. 
He humbled himself. He became their servant. He shared in their life. He made them clean. And that is still true to this day. For though we no longer see him like they did, our Lord Jesus still loves to love you. He loves to make you clean just like he loved to make them clean that night. He loves to be with you just like he loved to be with them. He loves your presence just like he loved their presence. And if you ever forget that, well, then remember what else Jesus did on this night long ago, how he instituted the meal that we call the sacrament of the altar. For now the love of Jesus is not given to us by the washing of our feet, but it is given to us in this wondrous, mysterious meal, in this sacrament of Holy Communion. He, ta- he took bread, and he said, this bread is my body. He took wine, and he said, this wine is my blood, so that his disciples then, and so that you now tonight, would be able to taste, would be able to drink the love of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus was all about love, and this meal that we celebrate tonight is all about love as well. The love of Jesus is still poured out for you. It is given to you in the sacrament. Before he went to the cross, he told them, here is what I'm going to do on the cross. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you by giving my body in your place. I'm going to love you by shedding my blood in your place. And here's why I started the way I did tonight, by reminding you that the love of Jesus is not the trite kind of love. It's not, you know, the flaky sort of thing. It's not the infatuation that high schoolers have for one another. It is the deep and abiding love of God who gives himself completely for you. And now in the sacrament, he gives himself completely to you. So let no one suppose that Jesus doesn't love me. You know, he loved his disciples long ago, but who could stand me? Have you ever thought about that, that Jesus actually enjoys you, that Jesus actually loves you, that he loved to be in the presence of his disciples long ago, and he still to this day loves you? I don't mean he just tolerates you. I guess I got to put up with them. You know, I really like this guy over here, but everybody else, gosh, I guess it's a package deal, so I have to tolerate them. No, Jesus loves you. He loves each and every one of you. Let that never be a trite thing in your ears. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And tonight, that love still comes to you. And so let me end tonight with just putting the question now back to you. Having been loved by Jesus like this, what are you to do? Jesus loved his disciples to the end. But see, here's the thing about teaching someone love When you teach love, it's not like you're teaching just kind of bits of information. Two plus two equals four. You can put that in your pocket. Um, You know, the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. That's a fact. You can keep that in your pocket. The love of God is not trivia. It's not information that you store somewhere in your mind that you can write down on a piece of paper. The love of God transforms you. It is a transformative kind of thing. Isn't that how all love is? When your friends love you, you love them in return. When your parents love you, you love them in return. When Jesus loves you, when you receive the love of Jesus, let it have its full effect in you. Respond in the same way. Isn't that what he told his disciples to do? If I, your Lord and Master, have done this for you, if I have loved you to the end, you also must love one another. I don't know how many more days you have in this world. I don't know how many more days I have in this world. Jesus knew that his time was short. I don't know if your time is short. I don't know if our time is short or my time is short. But just like Jesus didn't waste any bit of that night, don't waste any bit of your life. Let the love of Jesus have its full effect in you. Having been loved by Jesus, learn to love him in return by loving one another. In return. After all, the person sitting next to you is someone Jesus loves, right? So if Jesus loves them, I suppose you could love them too. The person sitting in front of you, the person sitting five rows, they're all people who Jesus loves, who he enjoys being with. So learn to do the same thing, for that is what our Lord's love is at work doing. 
There is a great calling for us in this. There is something for each of us to learn and to put into action, but there is also this great promise that his love, which has begun this work in us, that has begun to transform us, will one day be brought to completion. And on that day when it is brought to completion, then having loved his own who were in the world, he will have loved us all the way to the end and made us to be perfectly lovely. Now there's something worth looking forward to. There's a goal worth having. There's something worth striving for. There's something worth being remembered for. So let us love him as he first loved us. That's what this night is all about. It is about the washing of Jesus of his disciples and it is about this great meal of love. Let it have its full effect in you. To Christ be the glory now and always. Amen.